Although Mr. Sun is 93 million miles away, and it takes his light eight minutes to reach us, he's really quite close. The light from the next nearest star, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, takes over four years to get to us. We know Mr. Sun is so large, our Earth is barely visible alongside him. It would take some 340 worlds, like beads on a string, to make a necklace around his shining sphere. How much does Mr. Sun weigh? Thousand worlds? A hundred thousand? No, sir. He weighs as much as 330,000 Mother Earths. We also know that Mr. Sun is not solid or liquid, but a fiery ball of hot, glowing gases, consisting of some 95% hydrogen and helium, and a few percent all other elements. We know that this huge cloud of hot gases would expand, float away, dissipate into space, unless gravity squeezed it together into a tight sphere. The gases at the center of the sun are so densely packed by gravity that they're about 100 times heavier than water. And the pressure is around 1 billion tons to the square inch. While at the surface, the gases are so thin, the pressure is only about 1 pound to the square inch. We know, too, that the temperature at the core of the sun is incredibly hot, around 30 million degrees Fahrenheit. While at the surface, it drops down to just about 10,000 degrees. But here's a strange thing. As we go out from the sun into the corona, the temperature goes up again to over one million degrees at the outer edges. Tell them why, Dr. Research. We don't know why. You don't? Well, what is the corona, anyway? We don't actually know that yet. Oh? But we do know there's more to Mr. Sun than the shining surface we normally see, which we call the photosphere, or sphere of light. Only when the moon moves between us and the sun and covers the photosphere completely in a total eclipse can we see the rest of Mr. Sun's thin atmosphere, the beautiful and mysterious corona. The small sphere you see here represents the size of the Earth in comparison with the sun. Your surface, Mr. Sun, is a stormy sea of violent motion. Small spicules or geysers like these continually burst from blisters on the surface and jet up like little fountains, if you can call five or 10,000 miles up little. Compare them with the size of the Earth. Big flame-like eruptions like these are called prominences. They're vast clouds of gas that sometimes float idly, at other times shoot out at thousands of miles per minute, as if they never heard of gravity. Sometimes they rise in graceful ribbons. When a large flare flashes up around a sunspot area, it immediately sends out a burst of powerful ultraviolet rays that hit the Earth in eight minutes. But it also sprays streams of slower electrified fragments of atoms out into space as if from a hose. This solar spray of fine particles usually misses the Earth, but at times the Earth is in its path. Now the Earth is a magnet with north and south magnetic poles and a magnetic field around it. The spray of minute particles shot from the sun, which takes some 30 hours to reach the Earth, is deflected toward the poles by the Earth's magnetic field. As this solar dust, stardust you might call it, comes down into our atmosphere near the poles and collides with air molecules, it creates the most beautiful spectacle of the aurora, also called the northern and southern lights. Dr. C.W. Gartline of Cornell University took this unique time-lapse motion picture of the actual aurora borealis. The Earth's rotation produces the apparent motion of the stars in the background.